right? The April, the April 26, 2022 regular meeting of the Hawthorne City Council is called to order at 6.04 p.m. I'm going to ask uh, uh, City Manager uh, Norris to do the uh, Pledge of Allegiance today and City Attorney Robert Kim to do the invocation. Okay, if we can have everyone stand, please. Place your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. If we can bow our heads, um, bless this uh, Lord. Bless this meeting. Bless the uh, the city leaders and the council members that we make a good decision for the residents. Bless the city uh, for all the good things that should happen to this city in the future. Um, and bless our country uh, as we're in a struggle with uh, world conflicts and. And bless the world in solving a cure for this pandemic that doesn't seem to stop. Um, and uh, and bless the staff for doing a very hard work with a with a short limited number. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Okay. Mr. Clerk, can you do the roll call, please? Uh, yes, I can. Councilmember Montero. Present. Council member Reyes English. Go ahead. I'll go back to Ms. Uh, Council member Reyes English. Council member Valentine? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Patterson? Here. And Mayor Vargas? Here. I'll try again. Council member Reyes English? Okay. Um, all are present except for Council member uh, Reyes English. As soon as I see her on the line, I'll just recognize that she's here, okay? Perfect. Um, quick double look. Okay, sound good, right? Right. Okay, thank you. Mr. Clerk, please read the guidelines for oral communications, please. Uh, pursuant to government code section 54954.3, all remark remarks shall be addressed to the, count to the city council as a body and not to any individual council member. During oral communications, speakers shall have three minutes to state their business the Brown Act prohibits the city council from providing a detailed response or acting upon any items not contained on the agenda. The governing bodies as a body shall have the discretion at the close of oral communications to refer any remarks to the city manager for study, investigation, report, and or recommendation. Mr. Clerk, do we have any comments? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we, well, we received no emails regarding public comment for tonight's agenda, but we did receive four speakers that will be speaking during oral communications. Okay, go ahead, sir. Ms. Barrett? Yes. Hi, you have three minutes. You can start. Thank you and good evening, Mayor, city members, and also staff, city council members. I'm sorry, my name is Olivia Barrett. I'm with Adolescent Care Facility, Diamond Hill. And I'm here today to inform you of the outstanding and kind deed coming from the Hawthorne Police Department under the leadership of Chief Ashi. Uh, we are a 24-hour residential treatment facility and we accept placements from the Department of Children and Family Services, Department of Mental Health, and also the Department of Probation. Lieutenant Sean Shimono, Sergeant Nicholas, Sergeant Kenny Craig, and also Officer Lamika Bell recognize our challenges and offer their support in an area we never could have imagined. On April the 13th, 2022, these officers from the Horathon Police Station arrived at our Horathon facility with their therapy dogs. While therapy animals are known to be used to remove emotional barriers from challenging life experiences. And I tell you, we are so grateful for the attention from these officers who genuinely show that they care about our children and our children couldn't be more pleased with this experience. So mayor, city council members, 
We thank you for the opportunity to, to express our uh, concern about this under all communication during this council meeting. And we feel that it was only right to let each of you know about the wonderful services performed by the Hartford Police Department. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Verrett. You have a good night. Thank, thank you. you. Next speaker. Okay. Ms. Donaldson? Yes, I'm here. Good evening. You have three minutes. You can go ahead. Hi, this is Patricia Donaldson, President and CEO of the Hawthorne Chamber of Commerce. Just want to announce that on May 5th, that's this week, Thursday, uh, next week, sorry, uh, we are having Cinco de Mayo Mixer. We're having the Taco Lady. We're having a 50-50 drawing. We're having margaritas. We're having Mexican bingo and prizes, and it's all being hosted by the South Bay Credit Union. And it's going to be from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. at the Hawthorne Chamber office, which is at 13335 Hawthorne Boulevard. That's next to the laundromat and across from Pizza Show. So that's May 5th uh, and Cinco de Mile Mixer. And I hope to see all of you there. Thank you very much. Thank you. You have a good night. You okay. too. Okay, next we have Mr. Raddick. Mr. Raddick, you have three minutes. Okay. I'd like to address the council about SB9. Uh, you guys have been sitting there talking about it. We've been listening to it. And that's all you've been doing. And in the meantime, in my neighborhood in Bodger Park, you walk around and people are already building, changing their houses from their lots from R1 to R2. They're building it. Their, their homes in the back, it's taking up the backyards. So you guys have to do something or just let it go and let the state run our city. You know, it, it's, it's bad. We are losing control of our city. You guys are more worried about getting a penny raise or voting for a mayor. We long ago did away with that idea of rotating mayorship. So let's get to work on trying to get something done with SB9 and TED, maybe even to try to join the lawsuits from other cities. Thank you very much. Have you have a good night, Mr. Reddick. You too. Bye-bye. Right. Okay. And our final caller tonight is uh, Ms. Fernandez. Ms. Fernandez, you have three minutes. Hi, good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Lily Fernandez, a uh, lifelong resident here, speaking today on a couple of things. And my main issue, again, is the parking. Um, I've had a few incidents and a few residents that we work together, we call parking enforcement, to come and tag up cars for 72 hours. Um, if, and we know they belong to the mechanic shops around the area. Uh, we do specify they belong to the shops in the area. And uh, sometimes the cars may be marked, sometimes they are not marked. However, it's starting to be just, uh, um, it takes a lot of our time to do this. And I need to know if there's anything that's being implemented. I mean, I'm constantly calling on this. I left a message for the parking enforcement supervisor yesterday due to a car not being tagged, three cars not being tagged. I'm yet to receive a phone call. I just feel that we're not getting the services that we are paying for in our taxes. I mean, we're, these are homeowners that I deal with. We're all calling, some are renters as well. Our life is impacted by having to park two or three blocks away where I nearly pick up one of my uh, neighbors because they park two blocks away. So she doesn't have to park, uh, come by herself and walk by herself as we have a lot of uh, activity in the nighttime, but she works the night shift. I really need your help on this. Um, see what we can do. Uh, parking is already impacted by others. Um, our auto mechanics, I drive all the way around Imperial, Inglewood Prairie. Cars are being worked on the street. Is parking enforcement not enforcing any parking tickets? They just pass by and let it be. Um, I've driven by Broadway in LA and it looks, it's getting to be similar to what we have here. Um, we're the city of Hawthorne. We're not downtown LA. Thank you very much. Your help is very much requested. Need it. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Mm -hmm. That is the end of, of this public the speakers who called in prior. We have to wait now 30 seconds. 
And uh, Mr. Mayor, can you re uh, remind the people that the phone number is on the front of the agenda? Because uh, some of the constituents talking to me yesterday, they said there was no number, but it is on the front of the agenda, very small, but it is there. On the yeah. yeah. Uh, can we, uh, well, let's just wait. Um, let's just wait for the 30 seconds to complete. Yeah, it doesn't make, yeah, so thank you. Okay, that that uh that's the thirty seconds. Oral communication is now or uh, close order. Uh, Mr. City Clerk, can we sort of highlight the telephone number that's there? At least bold it. Yeah, we can bold it. Just bold it right there, just so that the, it could stand out in there. Yeah. Um, no need to bring it out or anything. I think it just let's try it out that, that way. Okay. Okay. And it's also when uh, the agenda. The information for the meeting is placed on social media. The phone number is on there as well, in addition to the actual document. Oh, okay. Yeah. But we'll go ahead and bold it for next time. Yeah, just cover all our bases, right? Okay. Thank you, Mr. City Clerk. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a pretty straightforward meeting today. So, Mr. Clerk, can we start off with your consent calendar? Go ahead. Yes, Mr. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I have five items on the consent calendar. There are items 5, 6, 7, 9, and 10 for your consideration and approval. Item five, approval of city minutes for the meeting of April 13th, 2021, and the special city council meeting minutes of April 28th, 2021, and May 12th, 2021. Item six, approval of waiver of full readings of resolutions and or ordinances on tonight's agenda. Item seven, city treasurer's request approval of the warrants. Um, resolutions, we have item nine, res resolution number 8351, a resolution of the city council of the city of Hawthorne, California, proclaiming the week of May 1st, 2022, through May 7th, 2022 as Municipal Clerks Week. Item 10, resolution number 8352, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Hawthorne, California, proclaiming the month of May 2022 as Mental Health Awareness Month for adoption. I make a motion. Second. Thank you. Um, motion, uh, the second goes to Councilwoman Valentine. Roll call vote, please. Councilmember Montero. Yes. Councilmember Reyes English. Yes. Council Member Valentine? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Patterson? Yes. And Mayor Vargas? Yes. The vote reflects Mayor and City Council voting yes. That concludes my consent calendar, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Um, for item 11, there are no bids at this time. So that's what usually goes on next. Um, but we do have a public hearing, which is one item. Uh, Mr. Clerk, can you read uh, item number 13, please? Um, yes. Um, now is a time and place for a public hearing for draft 2022 through 2023 action plan for the community development block grant and the home investment partnerships programs. Housing department's declaration of publication filed. No written communications were received. Recommendation motion. The staff advises that the city council, one, conduct the public hearing and receive comments on the draft for the year 2022 through 2023 action plan for the use of community development block grant and the home investment partnership funds Two, adopt the 2020 22 through 2023 action plan and authorize the city manager or designee to submit the plan and any necessary amendments to the plan to the united states department of housing and urban development three provide city staff with a methodology to distribute funds should the city's 2022 through 2023 CDBG and home allocation be different than the estimated amount budgeted. Four, authorize the city manager or designee to negotiate, execute, and amend contracts with subrecipients for professional service providers as necessary to implement the CDBG and the home projects identified in the 2022 through 2023 action plan. Five, authorize the city manager or designee to execute, amend, and submit to HUD all plans and documents necessary to administer, administer the 2022 through 2023 CDBG and home programs. Uh, six, authorize the appropriation of funds for the 2022 through 2023 CDBG and home programs. Mr. Mayor, oh, go ahead. Um, sir, sir, do we have any comments on this specific item? Since it is a public hearing, do we have one? Uh, Mr. Mayor, we have received no emails regarding public comment for this item, and we have, and that is all. Okay. So let's just wait 30 seconds to see if anybody calls now that we are uh, talking about this.
Is it up? Okay. I think more seconds. Up. Yeah, ten more seconds. Oh, okay. Absolutely. I don't have a Rolex watch <laughs> working for working for me. <laughs> my, my Rolex says it's thirty seconds. I'm sorry. I said, "Oh, cheapo Casio." I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. Is that is the time? We're good, right? That's time. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, so thank you, sir. Uh, so I'll declare oral communications on this item closed, so ordered. I will make a motion to approve the draft 20. Miss, there's a raised hand. Mayor, my hand is up. Oh, I am so sorry, Council Member Montero. Go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I want to say uh, thank you to Kimberly and, and the consultant for preparing the report. Um, I have a suggestion. Uh, you know, under the uh, 2223, the public survey activities, you know, you have the South Bay Work Investment Board, the New Star Justice Center, Family Promise of the South Bay, Family Home Support, and the, the Catholic Charities of Los Angeles, Omega Center. I was wondering if they would, do we have any, maybe, I don't know, about 10,000, 12, you know, remember the Sentinella Youth Service came to us to request some funding. I was wondering if there is any possibility that we could include them under the public service activity for the Sentinella Youth Service. Because I think they asked us for $12,000, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Ms. Valentine? Yes, it was. So I don't know yes. if we can we have any room to maneuver and, and include them. So we have two options there. Good evening, Council. This is Kimberly Mack, Director of Housing. Um, good evening, Mayor, City Council members. Two options we have. We can reduce the funded allocation for those that are already listed and to include the 12,000 for those, they would have to apply and be considered eligible for that funding. Mm -hmm. Or we can, if in the event that the amount is greater from HUD that we receive, we can make that our first action if it does not exceed the allotted um, public service uh, percentage. Yeah, yeah. because I was thinking because, you know, since they, they, they've been in, 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 our, uh, in our area, you know, providing service for a long time. And, and so uh, I think it would be um, recommended to see if we can accommodate them. Okay, that's my recommendation. Um, yeah, but can I respond to that uh, briefly? Uh, um, I believe city manager has has another um, recommendation for them. And I, I wondered if he would share it with us at this time. Councilman yes. Patterson, you, did you put your hand down? Put it down. Oh, you put it down? Okay, so- uh, we'll I'll, let, I'll wait till Councilman Valentine and City Manager. Okay, yep, so then Councilman Reyes English right after that. Go ahead, sir. Good evening. Um, the city was able to allocate $5,000 to this uh, nonprofit or to this agency. So we're um, in the progress of initiating that. So. That's where we are today. We have allocated $5,000 for this group. Mayor, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem Patterson, you want to go ahead? Well, I would say, you know, in light of the fact that there has been funding secured for them, it doesn't sound like that would be necessary to include them in this. However, if we did, my suggestion would be to fund them with any kind of uh, additional money that might come in over and above that we, that we might be anticipating. Yeah, I think we already, it sounds like we already have a structure in place, right? So, although Councilmember Montero offered uh, us a, another option, right? Well, that is what Kimberly said. If they, if they, because we don't have a set amount yet from, from, from the federal government, from CDPG. So if we have extra money. So it seems now uh, um, Vaughn has a plan to give them some money. So I, I just want to make sure that, uh, because we do understand that they provide service to the, to the youth also in uh, in uh, in Hawthorne. So I just want to make sure that we don't let them out completely. Council Member English and then Council Member Valentine, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. I have a question with regards to the allocation of a CDBG monies, which um, the South Bay Web was listed. However, isn't Sentinella Youth Services under the South Bay Web? No, they're not. Not anymore. No. So that's be. no longer part of the South Bay Web. No, they're not. They used to be. Okay. So, yeah, they used to be, but they separate. So from what I understand, then, 
if this group in the future, Sentinella, is looking for CDBG monies, they have to apply for it, correct? correct. Kimberly? You are correct. Okay. So they didn't, they didn't have, did they apply this year? No. Okay. So they're going to have to apply next year? Yes. Okay. So considering uh, the resources that Vaughn is, is making efforts on and discussion that possibly looking for other uh, potential uh, funding coming through for other purposes, they will be obviously considered. However, since they're not this year, I would highly suggest that they apply for next year. But thank you. Council Member Valentine, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to suggest that um, we go ahead and, uh, and, and uh, fill the gap since they had applied for approximately 12,000 and um, Vaughn has uh, secured 5,000 for them. Perhaps we could apply, um, use this, the funding here, the CDBG money uh, for uh, request $7,000 for CYS. Because I, I, the, the money they requested was based on the actual services that they perform for our, our children in the city of Hawthorne. And so um, I think that uh, they deserve the amount they requested if we can, if we can do that. Uh, okay. uh, Council, Council, Council Monterey, go ahead. Uh, Kimberly, let me ask you a question. So the um, the proposed agencies, uh, so the, the request for proposal have gone out already and they submit the application? That is correct. That has oh. to all be done before it comes to dry. The city does have the discretion to add another public service. And so long as the monies that are spent yeah. are within the percentage allowed by HUD, um, if the city so chooses, we can approve the current um, action draft action plan and make that change and go through the process with them. And if for some reason they're ineligible for assistance, just keep the original uh, numbers that we presented tonight. All right. All right. Thank you. So uh, I'll accept that recommendation. Thank you. So a real quick question, Kimberly. Um, did, so the request for proposals have already gone out? Yes. Gone out, received, reviewed. Yes. Okay. So, so those that, listed are the one. So the deadline has passed for applications. Yes. How did you recruit? How did you send this out? to like how um, do you determine who to send this, who to inform? We send it out the same way we send other documentations are online. We have to publicize it in the Herald Pri Press Tribune. We send it to our social media sites, um, the website. We send it to everybody who applied last year um, in any way that we can get the word out for people to be interested in it. Okay. So uh, does the city council feel confident and comfortable that we did what we could to recruit? This is a question yeah. to my council colleagues. I yeah, I I I I'm I believe that it was done correctly. So I, I do make a motion to accept the Kimberly recommendation. So it's, okay. it's yeah, no I just want to see what every what, what everybody else is. Everybody else is okay? Yes, Mayor. I, I think you know that uh all efforts are made to get as much participation as possible. Uh, I just wanted I'd to like say this because sometimes there's outliers that come and say certain mm -hmm. like, yeah. So so I'll I'll, stick, I'll second the motion. Thank you. But, ha but can I just finish my, yeah, my go ahead, comment? Go ahead, ma'am. My comment is that I'd like to see other entities uh, be able to inquire on how they could possibly be part of the CDBG process because it it just seems redundant having SAMO SAMO. And I say that with all due respect because I do know there's other groups and organizations in the city of Hawthorne that wants an opportunity. So I'm just, uh, again, encouraging that further steps be made so that there are other there are other opportunities for those that have not ever received CDBG. Um and no and that, that's a, that's a fair statement that's why I asked what I asked, right? And yeah. then so so I guess you're in agreement with me that we should do everything and as of now I think we could move forward with this though, right? Yes, correct, but but we'll make efforts next year to have other efforts. And um uh, I just like adding adding to that, I just believe that um those people are looking for funding these types, they should be proactive also and keep their ears and eyes open on the funding that they're gonna have uh, that are, is available, inquiring. So we're gonna do our part, but they also have to meet us halfway and uh, see what our city has to offer. Other government governmental organizations have to offer, et cetera. So it's a two-way effort on that, but okay, that sounds good, I agree. A roll call vote, please. Okay. Council Member Montero? Yes. Council Member Reyes English? Yes. Council Member Valentine? 
Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Patterson? Yes. And Mayor Vargas? Yes. The vote reflects mayor and city council voting yes. All right. Uh, Mr. Mr. City Manager? Uh, we have ordinances next. Yes, no, I understand. Okay. Mr. City Manager? Yes. How are we good with our imaging and our audio? Uh, give me two minutes and I will check back with you. Okay. Should we just proceed with the meeting? We're capturing. Yes, I would recommend proceeding as normal and I will update you shortly. We should have a capture of everything that's happened to be able to post, right? So, okay. Let's continue moving forward. Okay. Ordinances. Uh, we have ordinances. Mr. Clerk, please read item 15, please. Okay. Ordinance number 2233, first reading an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Hawthorne, California, adding and enacting Chapter 15.71 expedited streamlined permitting process for electric vehicle charging stations of title 15 building and construction of the Hawthorne municipal code for introduction okay uh motion to introduce I motion to introduce okay so uh, just a motion to introduce yeah. is all that we, we need so uh city manager's consent calendar mr city manager the agenda reflects you have items 18 to 22 on the consent calendar Please proceed by introducing the items into the record. Absolutely. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Temp, uh, Council Members. Item 18, premium pay to eligible city workers performing essential work during the pandemic. Item 19, progress payment number one in the amount of $171,486.40 to Southwest Pipeline and Trentless Corporation of Torrance, California for sewer improvement project. 2022 project number 21-07 item 20 first amendment to the consultant oh excuse me first amendment to the consultant agreement for survey services between the city of hawthorne and drc engineering incorporated item 21 approval of purchase order to hydrix incorporated dba smart cover system in the non to exceed amount of fifty thousand dollars lastly item 22 agreement and purchase order between the city of Hawthorne and the New Look Auto Detail to provide vehicle disinfecting services. Mr. Mayor, that concludes my city manager consent calendar. May I have a motion to approve items 18 through 22? Thank motion. You. Uh, I want to pull item 18 and 22 for discussion. Okay, we'll grant you that. Go ahead. 18 and 22. Yeah. I make a motion on 19, 20, and 21. So okay. Okay. Uh, the rope of uh, the uh, motion. The second goes to uh, Mayor Pro Tem Patterson. Roll call vote, please. Council Member Montero. Yes. Council Member Reyes English. Yes. Council Member Valentine. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Patterson. Yes. And Mayor Vargas. Yes. The vote reflects Mayor and Council Members voting yes. Discussion item 18. Right. Uh, I, I just want some clarification on this item, right? Because um, as you know, you know, uh, we gave the hero pay to, to some staff during the negotiations, right? Um, and, and when I read this thing, it says performing essential work. So who um, do we designated who was the essential work? Because, you know, uh, we know that some of the staff were I don't, I don't want to say mandate to come to work every day during the pandemic, but some other staff were working from home and they never lost uh, their income. The city continued to pay them on a regular basis. So I'm trying to figure it out. Have, did we identify essential workers or this is going to go for everybody? Um. If I can interject, uh, this staff. I'll, report, I'll have a follow up comment after that, though. But go ahead. Okay. Um, on the staff report, it would be all employees that were employed by the city of Hawthorne, full time and part time, that were employed from March 4th, 2020 through September 14th, 2021. It would incorporate all employees that worked during that time. Uh, they telecommuted half the time or worked half time. If they were an employee and was working during that time, this uh, premium pay would apply to those individuals. So, so that means so when we said 
premium pay to eligible city worker performing essential work. <laughs> so that's that's the hot part that I have that when we said essential work, you know, because we talk about a lot of the, uh, you know, I know public works, uh, they were mandated to be at work, for example, maybe parks and rec and the, the police, the, the first responders per se, code enforcement, right, licensing people. So, the, so are we not distinguish none of that? That's my understanding? Yes, you're correct. All right, all right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Mr. City Manager, I, I, I really just wanna just, I mean, I do, I, I kind of have the same question that uh, Council Member Montero has. I don't want to say concern, but uh, when we say essential work working, that usually means that the, the employee is exposed to um, certain types of contaminants or certain types of dangers. As we mentioned, like the essential workers that were going out and coming into contact with uh, people, et cetera. One, one case that I do uh, want to highlight is when uh, they opened up the COVID testing station over at the Memorial Center. Some of our employees, for for a limited amount of time, it was like at some point we figured out uh, we found a solution. They were out there uh, taking trash out and and going into the bathrooms after people were testing themselves. So they were asked to clean up the uh, testing area. So um, to me, that is an, a clear. Um, demonstration of essential work and putting yourself in danger. And some of our people, uh, public works employees uh, out in the street and the parks and recs people that worked inside the jail. So is there any distinction, do you feel, or is there any reason why you're including everybody? Just Well, it was direction given to the staff. That's the, the first reason why it includes everybody. Ah. Sec secondly, uh, essential, if someone's working from home, their work they were doing was essential to the city functioning. Okay. So that that's the reason why we put essential in the staff report. Okay. okay. Yeah, I just wanted to, you know, just because of different, if the, I just want to go with the spirit of what we want to do here. Right. Absolutely. Okay. That's what I, yeah, that's what I'm getting at. To the chair. Go ahead, ma'am. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm going to use myself as an example. I work for the city of Los Angeles full time. That's my full time job. And I was considered an essential worker. So to continue keeping our government agency open, right, and functional, which we are a city agency uh, that required hands on, especially during the pandemic and the most pressing times that we had, um, I understand why it would include everyone that is a city employee, which is the workforce. Uh, um, you know, operations. So that's just, again, my, my understanding, uh, considering as, you know, again, myself as an example. I'll make a motion on item 18. Second. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, seconded by Mayor Pro Tem. Roll call vote, please. Council Member Montero. Yes. Council Member Reyes English. Yes. Yeah. Council Member Valentine. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Patterson. Yes. And Mayor Vargas. Yes. The vote reflects mayor and council members voting yes. Item 22 discussion. Yeah, item 22, actually, I just want to make a comment that I saw that this service is provided in Gardena. Hi, Alan. Uh, <laughs> I want to make sure that uh, we gave priority to the business in Houghton. So I don't know if, if Houghton has something similar, because I know if they don't, so we have to go outside. So can, that that's my comment. I'm not opposing anything, but I'm just saying, that I would prefer for us to start looking more, giving business to hot on business before we go outside, right? Well, I think that's enough for, yeah. I think that's enough for me to uh, question this. Um, hey, you started it, brother. I, well, I just, I just want to know if, if hot on does not have one of those services. That's what, you know. Our city manager could okay, ask Alan. Or Alan? Go ahead. I'll let Alan take that question. Thank you, Alan. Okay, thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Putin and City Council. Uh, yes, we, we have checked um, our nearby uh, business in the city to see if they can provide that kind of service. Uh, this company has been working for police department for the city for over 10 years. 
and every employee of this business has been background checked by the police uh, so and also checked for the security uh, so it's kind of specialized uh, oh, okay. uh, service that they provide to the police department uh, where they clean and disinfect all the police vehicle so it's a limited type of business that that can be serviced for but this this type of service yes and that's very good explanation i totally agree with you now. is there a motion no problem i motion <laughs> thank, thank, thank you alan thank you i'll second it roll call vote please council member montero yes council member Reyes english yes council member valentine yes mayor pro tem patterson yes and mayor vargas yes the vote reflects mayor and council members waiting. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. City Clerk. Uh, next, we have the city attorney's consent calendar. Mr. City Attorney, please proceed with introducing your two items into the record, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we have two items on the city attorney consent calendar. Item num number 24 is a request to approve a settlement of a lawsuit of Martha Negretti versus City of Hawthorne. The second item is item number 25. We're recommending an approval of the settlement of Duke Mai versus City of Hawthorne. I move. Second. second. Oh, Mayor Pro Tem Patterson, I heard you first. So go ahead. Roll call vote, please. All right. Council Member Montero? Yes. Council Member Reyes English? Yes. Council Member Valentine? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Patterson? Yes. And Mayor Vargas? Yes. The vote reflects Mayor and Council Members voting yes. Um, uh, we have city council's uh, discussion action items. Item 27 has been pulled. Um, please, uh, city council members, please have all your items that you want to report during this time ready uh, to go. Uh, we want to avoid go back. Okay? <clears throat> um, Mr. City Treasurer, are you with us here today? We have a second discussion action item, number 28. Oh, okay. Well, we can do that after the this, can we? Or would you prefer to do the discussion item first? What were you going to do next? I, I didn't understand. Oh, okay. Go ahead. <coughs> Mr. City Manager, uh, item 28, please, as a discussion item. I'm sorry. Hybrid, in, hybrid in-person teleconference city council meeting. What are we going to do? I would like to defer uh, this topic to our city attorney, Robert Kim. Um, Mr. Mayor, uh, uh, what we have is a at the um, last council meeting, it was suggested that some of the council members wanted a hybrid uh, type of teleconference city council meeting starting on May 10th. Um, and um, it, it can be done, legally done under AB 361 as a teleconference meeting as a hybrid form as well. But um, I spoke to Eric Chavez of the cable department of any potential technical difficulties that, that a hybrid meeting would, would create. And, um, you know, I, I stated uh, at the last council meeting, that the Brown Act requires when, a, let's say, a council member is participating in the meeting from a, uh, uh, another location that there are procedural requirements. Well, all that is not a concern because AB 361 that council has approved on every 30 day basis based on certain findings. But the technical aspect is something that I, I think will make it a very difficult for council members, certain members of the council to uh, participate remotely where, where other council members are in person at the council chambers. So um, I, that's because uh, Mr. Chavez has informed me that um, they could do in-person meeting or a teleconference Zoom meeting, but they can't do both at the same time. And that creates a technical problem. Um, also, <clears throat> if you have a, a in-person council meeting and you have public comments from somebody that wants to remotely uh, make comment that creates a difficulty because that person will not be able to see um, the city council. So um, if you have any detailed questions about that, I think Mr. Chavez can chime in on that. And I, I, I hope I stated things correctly as he informed me. <clears throat> well, is there any comment from council? Uh, 
to the chair, uh, Councilmember Montero, and then Mayor Pro Tem Patterson. Well, I, um, it was my understanding that uh, at our last last meeting, we voted to go back in person on on the tenth. Uh, it was four to four yes and one believe no. So we are going to go back in person on the 10th. So, and then uh, whoever cannot attend the meeting is going to be excused. Correct? We I voted. Would, I would say I would say so. There's a majority thing going on here. Yeah, we voted. Um, I, I just, you know, I want to- Thank you, up, Robert. <clears throat> I wanted to bring it up because I, I think at the last council meeting, I may have um, not, uh, been accurate in terms of hybrid meeting type of uh, council meetings. So I, I just want to correct that information and um, an additional information that I learned from Mr. Chavez. Mayor Pro Tem Patterson, comment? Yeah, I have some questions about uh, hybrid meetings. I think that's kind of where this originated. And so I just want to confirm you're saying that while it, it's allowed, we don't necessarily have the technology to pull it off well. That's correct. Got it. Thank you, Robert, for the explanation. Appreciate it. Um, I think we should just go ahead as planned. <laughs> okay, so just, uh, so today is the 26th. The next meeting would be in person, correct? Right. Or, yes, we're scheduled to meet in person. person. May which, would, which would not, which would uh, be the third. So we have two weeks. Yeah, we have two weeks to prepare. Um, you can, uh, you can let us know individually what the like what the protocol is. Can we announce that to the residents somehow on what the protocol is? How are we going to get the message out to the residents that we are going in person? Would we start publicizing that now on our social media and on our uh, cable, Mr. City Manager? Absolutely. After tonight's meeting, we'll uh, have a strategic plan put in place to get the communication out that starting May 10th, uh, council meetings will be in person. Okay. And um, okay. Can we? Okay. So we, you have your directions. What did we establish? Can you repeat this for the benefit of those that are watching? This will be the last opportunity to hear us on Zoom. What are the conditions going to be for their attendance? Okay. We already established that. Just repeat whatever we uh, concluded last uh, meeting. Uh, as Councilmember Montero said, there was a majority vote to move forward with in-person meetings. Uh, we will not ask for vaccination cards, but uh, from my recollection the last meeting that we were going to require uh, masks. As this is a fluent situation that changes every day, I think that's hard to nail down. You know, if we're going to mandate masks today because things can change in two weeks. But as of two weeks ago, we did uh, suggest or recommend protocols to wear masks during the meeting. Uh, staff will be... Um, house in their office they will come down as needed the city manager city attorney uh the public and council members will be present in the in the chamber okay starting may 10th mm -hmm. thank you very much and uh, I, I just want i just have one request in that um i will not be bringing back a resolution for teleconference meeting anymore which is required under ab361 every 30 days um so if a situation should change where uh, due to the BA2 variant or whatnot, and the, the numbers start spiking and city council at some point desire to go back to teleconference meeting to please let me know as soon as possible so I could have that resolution uh, for the council. It has a vote down there listed on the discussion item, but I guess we had already concluded. Yes. There, there haven't yeah, been any probably. changes. I have a question or request. Go ahead, sir. And now, is it possible to consider uh, uh, Zoom meetings for special meetings? <laughs> no, and I, I thought That's it out true. there because as we enter the uh, the budget season, <clears throat> I remember this time last year we had I don't know three special meetings a week. Do you guys remember that? And I, I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't be able to attend those in person. You know, I work a full time job over ten hour days at my job. Um, that wouldn't be possible for me to do three. Um, in person uh, special meetings a week. Well, and can we? Can I just say too? I concur because of the same situation. My full time job and just an FYI. Okay, and I know that's not an exaggeration. We were meeting. We had maybe. Hey, 
I agree with all both of you, all, both of you, but I also think that those three, those several special meetings became because in, members of the council requested all those. Do we? Did we need? I think we had a budgeted for four of them. We ended up only having like two or three. So I think we can also control how many of these meetings we have. So I think we should just be conscious of that when we establish the path moving forward. Um, one additional factor is that the previous resolutions for um, under AB 361, <clears throat> it was a city council resolution for all commissions and committee to be allowed to do teleconference. So I may have, now that I think about it, I may have to bring back if there's a committee or commission that wish to continue to meet tele with, by teleconference, um, I'm gonna have to come up with some solution for that because it won't be city council doing it for them. So you're saying that you're saying that each of those commissions will have the option of doing that in over well this is city council's decision, but the commission and the committee from here on independently have to decide whether they want to continue with teleconference meeting or in-person meeting. If uh, the particular commission or committee uh, is, has to abide by the Brown Act, then they need to, if they want to continue teleconference meeting, then they need to independently uh, approve a, a resolution type that allows teleconference meeting um every 30 days but uh, but robert but we have made a decision to reopen city hall yes to go back to uh, in-person meetings yes so that will apply to all the commissions because we made the decision it's not that's my it's not that that's correct we may want to clarify that because i believe there are some commissions and committees that do not meet in city hall they may meet at um Memorial Park, if I'm mistaken, correct me. They all, no, they no, all, 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 all meet in City Hall. Okay. They all meet in City Hall. I think, I think uh, maybe, we, you know, uh, this conversation is, is, is creating more headaches than ever, but I believe after we voted to reopen City Hall and go back to normal, basically, uh, uh, you know, with some protocol in place, I think that should apply to all commissioners. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> well, that's one person saying that. Well, no, oh, no, no, but hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on no, think no. about it, think about no, it. No, hold on, I'm not arguing with you, my friend. I actually agree with you. I agree that it should be global. You didn't let me finish. It should be global. It should be global, like I uh, said, because, and, uh, but I still think our special meetings should be given the liberty of uh, having a Zoom because there's several, there's several of them. But if there's commissions that, uh, commissions or commissioners that don't think that or have a problem with it, maybe they shouldn't be on the commissions. Uh, so, I mean, I hate to say it that way, but, you know, we're opening up and I think it has to be a full-fledged effort across the board. So, I I have think, a, so go ahead. I have a question to, to Mr. Kim. Uh, for those budget meetings, can we just call a, a study session, not special meeting, so you don't have to be abide by the <laughs> by that rule? No, we're oh, the okay. council. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to circumvent okay. this. <laughs> and and I, I just want to uh, piggyback on what Mr. V uh, Mr. Mayor has just uh -huh. stated, and that is <clears throat> you can't have teleconference meeting for special meetings yeah. and require in-person for council meeting. Cannot... If we're going to do that, then I have to continue with the AB 361 compliance. Right. So then it goes back to our city council meeting. Just let's not set up a million meetings. Let's set up one or two, if we, however many we need. Or however many, we, we set up a special meeting for this workshop. We decide if we need another one, and then we'll announce it so as we go. As opposed to having already set like four of them, then it becomes burdensome. Yeah, or, may, or maybe set up the special meeting, let's say, uh, for the budget, five o'clock for one hour, five to six. So then we'll give other council members better time to get here. Okay. That's instead that. of instead of the middle of the day or three o'clock or something like that. I work till six. You work till six? Okay. Tuesday so, through Thursday. Monday through Thursday. There's so, ways we can do this. We're from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Thursday. All have those budget sections during the regular meeting. We may have to. Yeah. 
So we all stay here a little bit longer overnight. So since you put it that way, let's talk about it. Now. <laughs> all right. Okay, um, Mr. <laughs> City Attorney, do you have a direction? Do you have an understanding? Uh, I do. I have clarification. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Thank you, folks. All right. So uh, thank you, council members. So, Vaughn, don't do too many uh, budget study, okay? Understood. <laughs> yeah. Now, really, do you think it's the city managers that comes well, up with I'm not, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just joking. Yeah, I think coming through I just, the budget meticulously is very necessary. I'm just speaking on Vaughn. <laughs> so then we'll have a whole bunch. I can blame that on me. Well, I just want to do we'll it. We'll have a whole bunch time. then, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. <laughs> what was that? Do what? We'll have a whole bunch of them lined up then. No, just kidding. No, whatever we need to, and just as long as we have our questions ready, uh, maybe some of the stuff, as, as we ask our questions of staff before we come prepared, and then maybe, because we need a group, we just have some of that stuff ready, and so when we're here going through it in the workshop, then we can uh, just bounce I, uh, questions that we have off of each other, and it'll go much quicker. That's what, the, that's what these meetings should be. I Not just the whole, let me, let's start reading the whole thing from scratch at the beginning of the meeting. <laughs> all right, so thank you. Amen. Guys. All right, that applies to all of us. Uh, elected officials report recommendations. Do we have our city treasurer here? No, our city treasurer is not going to be joining us tonight. <clears throat> uh, city clerk, Dr. Paul Jimenez, go ahead. All right, uh, thank you, Mayor. I want to thank everyone for watching from home or listening from home. I have a few updates. Uh, in preparation of the centennial celebrations taking place this July, we're recruiting community members that would like to volunteer for our events, uh, which include a commemorative dinner, a parade, block party, a day at Hawthorne Museum, and a time capsule opening. So if you're interested in volunteering, please complete the link that will be provided via our website and social media platforms. Um, we were able to provide um, produce to over 650 families um, this last Saturday, it was uh, over 1,300 bags of produce. Um, so we're just really happy that uh, we're able to support the community and also register a few voters. Um, I also want to thank our, our volunteers from the various organizations, including the American Heart Association, uh, for providing us the produce and the staff that provides the, the dumpsters for us. Um, we will be in front of City Hall next Saturday, May 7th, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., uh, providing produce and registering voters. Um, in regards to vaccines, um, please, please get vaccinated. Um, unfortunately, COVID cases are increasing throughout the country. Uh, so please help in keeping us safe. Uh, for example, someone like myself, I have two young kids who cannot be vaccinated so because uh, they're under the age of five. So um, please, please, if you're coming to City Hall, uh, I would ask you to be vaccinated uh, on my own personal behalf and my family's. Um, and that's all on my end. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you, sir. Uh, let's move on to uh, Council Member Montero. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yet, uh, thank you, great meeting. Uh, I wanna thank for the callers who call in today and those who's watching us on Zoom or maybe on the uh, YouTube uh, later. Um, thank you, staff, uh, for all the reports and, uh, and the agenda, you know, the city clerk's office. Thank you very much for giving us all the, all the uh, uh, paperwork that needed. Um, thank you, Kimberly, for the for the uh, housing because I think that's it's um, for the CDPG report and annual report. So it's it's a long process. So thank you for that. Um, I want to say uh, thank you to the Parks and Recs Foundation for having the golf tournament yesterday. Uh, finally, they did it. Uh, so to raise money for our parks. So thank you very much. Um, and thank you, Vaughn, for being the speaker over there. So thank you. And I want to congratulate uh, Councilwoman Valentine for her seven annual business expo. Uh, this morning was a great event. So thank you very much. So the panels were very good. So thank you. And uh, and also the, we had lunch. So thank you very much. So thank you for that, uh, for that effort. Um, I just want to remind everyone that the Hawthorne President's Council actually is going to have the uh, uh, annual K-9 community dinner on May 19th. Okay, so we're going back to the uh, Memorial Center on May 19th at 5 p.m. There will be a K-9 uh, community dinner to raise money for the uh, K-9 unit for our Hawthorne Police Department. And I want to congratulate again the police department for the work outstanding that the lady just called 
this afternoon telling us about the tremendous job that our office has made impact on those youths and on their mental health. So thank you very much for the police department and continue to do a great work out there because you guys are the better brother and the safety uh, first line workers in the city of Hatton. So thank you very much. And thank you to all the department for doing us outstanding work like Mr. Kim prayed this, this <laughs> at the beginning, uh, doing the work with less bodies, right? Because we have a lot of uh, um, openings. So please go online and apply for the city of Hatton is hiring. And also, uh, and my heart goes to the family of that uh, lady that we lost at the finance department, Ms. Mungano. So my, my, my deepest sympathy to the department and also to the, to the family of that uh, young lady who just passed away yesterday. So thank you and good night. Thank you, Council Member Montero. Council Member Reyes English. Thank you, Mayor. I'm gonna be short. Uh, good meeting. Uh, thank you to all the support that we have from our departments and, and leadership. Um, can I just make a couple of uh, recommendations for the next agenda? at least for our city manager to inquire on emergency preparedness. Uh, we, we need to get a hold of that uh, in our city and once and for all implement um, protocols. And so I'd like to see how we could do that and ultimately find a, an individual to lead efforts in, in that department. Um, to the family of uh, Tawana, one of our coworkers, or I should say one of our workers with the city for a long time. Uh, my condolences, deepest condolences to her family, her son and daughter. Um, also for with regards to CDBG, this is an annual thing that happens with our city. So any nonprofit organizations has the opportunity to apply. I suggest that you um, ask to have an email sent to you when that time comes from the department so that you're aware and how to apply and what requirements would be needed for that. Um, just want to thank you again for all those uh, participating and uh, listening to the city council and more importantly your engagement that should do it thank you thank you very much uh, council member council member valentine yes thank you mayor so um we all got a letter those of us who live in hawthorne got a letter on on april 6th um or dated april 6th rather from our public works department and this is about the um the organic waste um, requirement beginning May 1st. So I'm just going to read one paragraph of the letter. And um, if you have any other questions, you can uh, contact uh, or we could ask uh, Director Alan Lung to elaborate because um, it was his letter. So beginning May 1st, 2022, residents in the city of Hawthorne will place all organic waste in the green curbside cart Organic waste includes foods such as meat, bones, dairy, fruit, and vegetable scraps, food soiled paper such as napkins and paper towels, and yard clippings. Residents may place food in paper bags in the green curbside cart. Plastic bags are not acceptable in the green cart. Recyclable materials such as paper, plastic, glass, and metal will continue to be collected in the blue curbside cart. Now the letter was longer than that, but that's the heart of the letter. Anyway, it's the new Hawthorne Organics Recycling Program, and it came up really fast. We were, we were um, advised about it last, uh, not that long ago by um, Republic Aviation, uh, Republic um, Services, but it is May 1st, next week it's coming up so that we have to start um, implementing it by then. So I'd like to make sure, and I'd like to ask Vaughn, um, was everyone in the city sent this letter? Um, was this a letter that was sent to everyone? Because I received it. I'm gonna let our public works director answer that question. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, yes, everyone um, who is customer of the public services received that letter. Okay. SB 1383. Okay, thank you. And um, am I correct that you're not going to be enforcing it at right now? Enforcement starts later, isn't that correct? That is correct, yes. Okay. So I urge all the residents to make sure you understand what the requirements are. And if you have any questions to contact City Hall and um, who would they contact, um, Mr. Director, Public Works Director, who would they contact? If they, uh, they, they can uh, contact um, 
public works uh, will be able to help them. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, and I, and so thank you all those of you who attended the um, business expo this morning. And I want to thank staff for their wonderful organization and uh, very smooth planning that, that went toward uh, implementing our, the first part of our business expo. So this morning we had the panel discussion, this afternoon we had the seminars, and we had a um, really nice attendance at the seminars. And tomorrow is really the, the heart of it. Tomorrow is the exhibition. And that's when we'll have, uh, we have, we have 80, 80 businesses that have registered to participate in our exhibition. So it, it's really going to be quite, quite an event tomorrow. Um, so I want to thank everyone. I want to thank you, especially Vaughn for or, uh, and Kawana for organizing it and for for getting all the volunteers together. It really was it was really was done very smoothly and very well. So thank you for that. Um, I too would like to extend my condolences to the family of Tawana Monago. I think her last name is uh, for her untimely passing and um, part of our city family. So. We all we all um, feel it whenever we lose a, a loved one in the city. So uh, we extend our condolences to her family. And uh, someone expressed an inter a concern about SB nine. As you know, I'm very concerned about SB nine, and I agree with your concern. There are just so many things involved um, because of, because it is a state law. Our hands are somewhat tied as to what we can do about it other than pushing back against it and hoping that we can get it repealed next year. But in the meantime, here's what I would ask you to do is to, for the citizens, for the residents, don't unnecessarily sell your property if you live in an R1 zone. Don't unnecessarily sell it if you don't have to because you're going to be getting a lot of um, of, of emails and letters from buyers, from corporations that want to buy your property. I've been inundated with requests to buy my property. So the way to, the way to avoid the problems of SB9, a part, part of the way is to not sell your property if you don't have to. Um, and if you do have to sell it, Try not to sell it to a corporation. Try to sell it to someone else who wants to live in that house and have a, you know, have a, have a nice property and wants to keep up the property and not build a multifamily house on that block. So that's, those are some of the things you can do as residents proactively. Avoid selling your house if you don't have to. And I know that's a, that's a, a big ask, but that's one way you can do and be proactive about it. So, and that is all I have, Mayor. Um, good night, everyone. Thank you, ma'am. Go ahead, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I want to also start off by offering my condolences to Tawana's family. Um, I, I, you know, I'm not, I don't have anything prepared except for it's just, I hate. You know, I just hate hearing this, this type of news. It's something that's just not, uh, it's not fun. I can't imagine um, what our family's going through, but uh, definitely appreciated the, the time we were able to share with you here in the city of Hawthorne. Um, also wanted to comment about uh, the caller who commented about SB9. Um, you know, like like uh, uh, Council Member Valentine said, there's not really uh, any easy answers. I'm hoping that uh, the charter that is looking to be on the ballot uh, this fall, if passed by by the community, would give us the ability to join the lawsuit um, that that's comprised by some of our neighboring cities. Uh, those those cities are all charter cities and um, their position is that uh, they shouldn't be subject to SB9 because they're a charter city and, and have uh, this greater local control. 
uh, over land use matters. And so hopefully uh, we'll be in the same position to make that same claim and join that lawsuit uh, after after November. Um, that's all I have, thanks. Thank you, sir. Okay, so um, on my first start, I wanted to start off by um, uh, extending my condolences to the city of Southgate. Uh, we have a lot of friends over there, council members and uh, uh, staff that works over there. One of their police officers uh, for Southgate passed away in a car accident um, a few days ago. And uh, we just want to be there with them in thoughts and in our thoughts and in our prayers. And um, I know that when a couple of our uh, police officers passed away, they were, they were there for us. So if I just like to ask for a moment of silence for the police officer that passed away, please. And the police officer was in his uh, mid twenties, um, so he was very young, and uh, you know it's unfortunate, right? We're thinking about this stuff along with our own employee. That I also extend my condolences to her, to her family, her friends here at City Hall, and her and her family at home. So uh, my prayers go out to Tawana and her fam family. Uh, as we do know, we had the Business Expo. It was a pleasure saying hello to everybody at the Business Expo. And there's a lot of people that are excited to attend. They attended today with the discussions that were had. And tomorrow there's going to be the uh, the displays in the main hall. So uh, something to look forward to everybody. So hopefully you can make it tomorrow. Uh, it was a two day thing, a two day affair. Um, also, uh, I just wanted to announce um, that I have attended a conference uh, institute sponsored by the National Association of Latino Elected Officials in the city of Chicago, which was on a scholarship that I received from Naleo itself. So it wasn't uh, paid for by the city, uh, but um, I just wanted to give some reports uh, with regards to what we learned. And uh, one of the things that we did learn, uh, Council Member Angie Reyes English and myself attended, uh, is that uh, we, we, you can, you never know when you're going to need to have that emergency preparedness plan uh, pulled out so that you can use it. And the biggest thing was, it's not if, but when, the accident or the emergency is going to happen. And as we all remember, um, it's because of the planning uh, that we had in place that we were able to uh, deal with the gas leak that took place on Imperial Highway a few years back. The level of preparedness was good enough for that, but there could be more dangerous uh, emergencies that could take place that we need to be prepared for, that we don't know uh, when they would happen. So as council member Angie Race English said, absolutely, let's just pull out those, uh, the emergency preparedness plan and let's make sure we update it and have it ready to go. So um, that's a request that I have, uh, Mr. City Manager, okay? Uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention is we have the T parkings. I think we've done pretty done good. We advocated for the T parkings, the markings on the street. And there are people who are violating this. They have the T parking and they're still kind of crossing over enough across those uh, T parking uh, 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 spaces that they don't allow the other person to go into their whole spot completely. So I am an advocate. It's very clear that there's two lines there and there's people who are violating it. There's a purpose for that. You see the two lines, you go park in between. Get out of your car and see if your car is within those two lines. Don't be lazy. You're causing problems for other people in the city when it comes to parking. You deserve a citation. That's all I have to say on that really. There's no exceptions. Um, 
So make sure that the that you don't hog up two spaces. Make sure that you're doing the responsible thing. But at the same time, um, I would like to see, Mr. City Manager, do you have any type of uh, public, uh, any information that we could put out? Can we do some type of, uh, what do we call those things? Uh, PSA, uh, Public Service Announcement, on that specifically, that these have a purpose, that people should comply, and if you don't comply, that you'll receive a violation. Can we give a people, uh, I mean, it's common sense, but people need to be reminded and highlighted, or we need to actively give a lot more citations. What we can do is something educationally to um, inform the public in those areas that the tea parking with the, the purpose of the tea parking is, and what can happen if you don't follow the tea parking regulations. But yes, we'll work on that and have that put out to the public. And the funny thing is I have people complaining to me, oh, I got a, I got a, I got a, I got a ticket for this because I was not with the line. You have a beast of a work truck that you're trying to fit in these things. You shouldn't even be bringing these home. Park it in a spot or park it in your driveway or park it, bring out your smaller car onto the street and put this beast inside your parking complex in within your apartment complex. Okay. You know, let's, let's make sure that we're responsible people. Um, and I'm very happy that our uh, parking enforcement crew at the police uh, department is following through on that. But if you hear me, just go ahead and uh, people just deserve to be cited. We haven't, I haven't had received a lot of calls either. So, but there's been enough for me to have brought this up here. So Mr. City Manager, can you come up with our, uh, with Eric or our creative team, like uh, to come up with some type of PSA so that people will know that we can not only put it on cable, Okay, we know that that has starting to have a decreasing reach so that we can grab that and put it on our all our social media and it could be distributed throughout the city. Email to all our city uh, neighborhood associations. No, so, thank you. Yeah, no, that, that one just really kind of stood out, man. All right, so, uh, okay, so that's it for me. And thank you all the residents for being here. Uh, yeah, and let's, let's have a moment of silence for Tawana as well. No more go backs, Council Member Valentine. Remember we said that. Oh, but you want to, you'll want to hear this one. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I want to thank you, Mayor Vargas, oh. for, oh, for um your very inspiring speech this morning on how business development in the South Bay is impacting Hawthorne. I think everyone really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for coming out and supporting the event. Thank you very That's much. All. Hawthorne is a big deal. We're sent a uh, uh, center of a lot of activity and movement. So something to be proud of. Thank you. Uh, let's uh, close the meeting up for our employee, Tuana, who passed away in her memory. All right, so uh, may Tuana rest in peace. Uh, this meeting is now adjourned.